Well, now we're going to talk about the plant kingdom. Remember, the plant kingdom is defined as being mem uh, having members who are multicellular autotrophs with chloroplasts and cell walls made of cellulose. And so we're going to talk about different kinds of plants and the types of cells they're made of and the tissues and organs, first of all. So there are four main kinds, three main kinds of cells that you find in plants. They're called parenchyma, colenchyma, and sclerenchyma. The most common type of cell is a parenchyma cell. These are used for storage of uh, various substances like starches and oils and water. Um, these are the plants that, when these are the cells that, when there is a wound to the plant, they're they're going to heal the wounds. They have thin, flexible walls and can be used for lots of different things. Uh, colenchyma cells are have stronger and flexible, more flexible, uh, strong and flexible cell walls. Their cell walls are unevenly thick compared to those of the parenchyma, and these provide support for the growing plant. And then the third type is the sclerenchyma. These are the strongest cell types, and they have secondary walls that are hardened by lignin. This is what makes wood hard, the lignin substances in the cell walls. There are lots of sclerenchyma cells in woody stems. There are four main kinds of tissues in plants, and they're made of the different kinds of cells, of course. Dermal tissue is like skin. Okay, it's the outermost uh, layers, and the dermal tissues provide protection for the plant. These are the tissues that secrete the cuticle, which is a waxy coating that you find on the leaves and on stem, some stems. And if, this is what forms the outer bark of trees. Ground tissue is all the cells in between the dermal tissue and vascular tissue. For example, <coughs> the parenchyma cells uh, that are used for photosynthesis and storage would be considered ground tissue. The colenchyma cells and the sclerenchyma that provide, that provide support for the plant would also be ground tissue. Vascular tissue, the third major kind of, of tissue, is uh, the tissue that, that transports uh, water and minerals uh, from the roots to the rest of the plant in the xylem. And um, the phloem tissue, which carries the sugars and other products of the cell to the rest of the, uh, other products of the plant to the rest of the cells of the plant. Um, and we'll talk about how vascular tissue works also. And the fourth kind of tissue is meristematic tissue. This is where growth occurs. So when you're looking, when, when the plant is growing, you're looking at the growth in the meristematic areas, both in the length of the stem and the root, and also in the width of the stem. There are two main kinds of roots found in plants. There are fibrous roots and tap roots. We generally find fibrous roots in monocots, which is one of the main kinds of flowering plants. You here see the fibrous roots that have lots and lots of tiny little branches, no one main branch. And then tap roots are generally found in dicots, the other group of um, flowering plants. And so here you see an example of a, a swollen tap root in a carrot or a primary tap root in a blazing star. <coughs> root structure, uh, the roots have several different parts of the root. There's a root cap that protects the tip. It's got thicker cells that support the tip as it pushes its way through the soil. The apical meristem, which is the region of active growth, which is right behind the cap. And the vascular cylinder, which contains the xylem and phloem tissues. When we looked at cells, uh, the onion that we're dividing, this is the part we were looking at in the apical meristem. Uh, if you dissect roots, if you cut them crossways or look at a cross section, you'll see various structures. Uh, we can see the different tissues involved here. We have an epidermal layer on the outside, both of these kinds. We also have an endodermal layer. That's, that's also dermal tissue that protects the vascular cylinder from the rest of the root. We have ground tissue or the cortex, which is made of just uh, various parenchyma cells. And then we have, and sometimes colenchyma and sclerenchyma, and then we have the vascular cylinder, which contains the xylem and phloem. A dicot root is going to have the xylem cells kind of making an X in the center and the phloem in between the arms of the X. And in the monocot root, you'll have vascular, you'll have the xylem tissues surrounding uh, the, uh, this, the uh, pith in the center and then in the middle of the phloem tissue. Stems have a lot of different functions. Of course, they support the, the leaves and the flowers, and they're the location of most of the vascular system. Uh, stems can be used to store water. They sometimes grow underground structures for storage, like potatoes. <coughs> and you can form new plants from stems also. Some stems are herbaceous and others are woody. Here's an example of a herbaceous stem. So this would be like a green, a green stem that's softer. And a woody stem, of course, would be like the bark of a tree. Now, if, when stems are growing, the primary growth of the stem is increasing the length, so it's going to grow at the apical mirror stem on up like this. There's also secondary growth, which increases the width, and that widens the roots and the stems. 
Um, here we have cross sections of, of dicot and monocot stems. These are herbaceous stems, ones that are not woody. And here you see in the vascular bundle with the with the phloem and the xylem tissue here in the dicot arranged in a ring around the ground tissue in the middle. Whereas in the monocot, you'll see vascular bundles that are scattered throughout the ground tissue rather than being organized like this. Uh, when we compare woody and herbaceous stems, you see some differences here that in the um, they all have a cambium. They have a cambium layer, which which allows for the lateral growth here. In the woody stem, the cambium uh, there's there's a primary xylem and secondary xylem, and that's what forms the rings, the tree rings, the growth rings of the plant. The the uh, primary and secondary xylem and phloem that's produced as a new layer each year as the plant grows out. In the uh, dicots, in the herbaceous dicot stem, you see the the vascular bundle surrounding that cambium layer that allows for the lateral growth. And then in the monocot stem you don't see that, you just see the vascular bundle scattered throughout the ground tissue. Leaves are another organ of the plant. These are the main organs of absorbing light and carrying out photosynthesis. They are usually composed of blades, which are usually broad and flat, which collect sunlight for photosynthesis. And in between dermal layers there are mesophyll cells. That are, those are made of, of parenchyma. Uh, this is where most of photosynthesis occurs. There are two main kinds of mesophyll, the palisade mesophyll, which are column-shaped cells, and this is the primary site of photosynthesis. These cells are packed with lots of chloroplasts. And then the spongy mesophyll are more roundish kind of cells, and they are not as tightly packed as the palisade mesophyll. They have air spaces in between, and this provides a route to the stoma, which is an opening in the, in the leaf to allow for exchange of gases. Here we have the basic structure of a leaf, the blade of course here with the veins, and uh, you can see it's attached to the stem here, um, and there's usually a bud right there where that's located so that that can provide for some new growth of a new branch. And here we have a cross section of a leaf. We've got the derm upper and lower epidermis with a cuticle or waxy coating on each one. The uh, palisade parenchyma or palisade mesophyll cells stacked up here, the spongy mesophyll lower down with air spaces in between. The, uh, the veins which include the xylem and phloem tissue and in the lower surface of the, of the leaf and sometimes in the upper surface as well you find the stoma which are openings which are surrounded by guard cells. Now the, the, um, the stomata are involved in the transport of water throughout the plant and the, the way the transport uh, uh, of water occurs in the xylem is called a cohesion tension theory. Water and minerals diffuse up from the soil to the root and um, and they are pulled up the xylem um, vessels by cohesion and adhesion. Remember, cohesion is the attraction of like molecules for each other, and adhesion is the uh, attraction of different molecules for each other. And with water, both of these involve um, hydrogen bonding between the water molecules and between the water molecules and the walls of the of the vessels. Transpiration, which is the evaporation of water vapor from the leaves, and the use of water for photosynthesis help pull water up into the leaf. So we have the combination of capillary action from cohesion and tension, cohesion and adhesion, and the transpiration and use by photosynthesis pulling this column of water molecules up the whole length of the tree from the roots through the stem all the way to the top of the tree. Uh, so absorption occurs in the roots, okay, and you can see the water and dissolved minerals entering through the root hairs here and entering the xylem. The cohesion and adhesion pull the water molecules up the, the uh, xylem vessels, and then at the leaves, the transpiration and use by photosynthesis pulls those water molecules on up through, through the xylem all the way into the leaf. Uh, xylem is made of two main kinds of cells, the tracheids and vessel elements. The tracheids are kind of spindle shaped uh, and they have pits in the side that allow the water to move through them. And then the vessel elements are have partially perforated end walls. And these are, uh, all, both of these kinds of cells actually are no longer living, they're just empty, uh, empty cells, uh, empty of the cytoplasm and just the cell walls are left. <coughs> the stomata are openings in the, in the surface of the leaf. Here you can see a photomicrograph of some. And they're surrounded by these two guard cells. The guard cells are specially constructed with a very thickened inner, inner cell wall there. And when, when the 
plant has plenty of water, the guard cells get swollen, and they're gonna put, that's going to cause the outer, the outer walls to kind of push out because they're more flexible than the inner walls, and that's going to pull these inner walls apart and open the stoma to allow water vapor to come in and out. When the, cell is, when the plant is trying to conserve water, that means these cells are going to shrink back and they're going to close up that opening and keep the stomata closed. Uh, this is important because this will help prevent wilting of the plant. Now the phloem carries the sugar and, and uh, hormones from the, from the region it's produced in to the rest of the plant. And the phloem is also composed of two kinds of cells. The sieve tube elements, which are cells that are tubular shaped that have a sieve plate or kind of a strainer in the ends. And these are living cells. And the companion cells, which are cells that are not, they don't conduct the fluids, but they provide metabolic support for the sieve tube cells. Uh, and they're collected by intracellular connections, such as we see here. Um, so the nucleus and in the companion cell provides all the metabolic support for the living cells, the sieve tube members, uh, as they are transporting the, the mineral, I mean, the sugars and hormones throughout the plant. This is transported by something called the pressure flow model. And in the pressure flow model, we have the plants that are actively transporting the sugar from the source, the leaves, to a sink, which is where the sugars are stored. That can be in a fruit or a root or some other part of the plant. And this is also going to involve uh, adding water to it to, by uh, osmosis because there's a higher concentration of sugars in the phloem than there is in the xylem and so water is going to diffuse across into the phloem cells that are adjacent and that's going to make this more fluid and that's going to let it flow more easily into the, the sink where it's going to be stored. And this concludes the lesson on plant um, cells, tissues, and organs.